Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to latest edition of our entertainment show. As you know, as part of our entertainment show, every week we look at our Into the Vault movie series. And this is a time warp uh, feature of our entertainment show, where we look back at cult classic movies throughout the decades, whether it's a 60s Western, a 70s or 80s uh, TV detective uh, movie, maybe it's a, a 90s horror or 2000s uh, sci-fi or even up to this uh, present day, maybe it's a 2020 a futuristic thriller. And this week into the vault, we're going back and we're going back roughly 20 years or so. We're going back now to roughly 1996. And we're going back to one of Kurt Russell's uh, prime uh, action thriller movies, a futuristic movie, uh, Escape from LA. It featured Kurt, Riss, Kurt Russell, Steve Buscemi, Pam Greer, AJ Langer, and our special guest, uh, our special guest today, the one and only Stacey Keach. And Stacey Keach played the role of Commander Malai in the in the classic movie Escape from LA. And I suppose, uh, Stacey, you've had a well-renowned acting career. You've been in the business for a long, long time and uh, been an awful lot of projects and stuff. How does Escape from LA still resonate from you to this day of all the things you've done? Have you a fond memories of your time on that set and on that movie in particular? Uh, particularly fond memories of that movie, yes. And the, the, the weird thing is, is the movie itself seems to, the reality of, of what the story was about seems to be happening a little bit. You know, I mean, there is a very good possibility that California won't be here. Anyway, I love doing Escape from L.A. And I, I loved working with uh, both Kurt Russell and John Carpenter, mm. who uh, I had done an earlier uh, short little film with him entitled uh, Body Bags. And there was, there was a series of short films that John Carpenter directed and one of those films was called Hair. And it was about a guy who was losing his hair and would do anything to regain uh, a pompadour. And uh, he gets in touch with David Warner, God love him, who recently passed, uh, who plays this crazy doctor. And on a television commercial, David Warner's doctor claims that he will restore your hair and, and you'll be the happiest man on the world on earth and of course what happens is he gives him this operation and it turns out that that the, the hair that he has been given is really a farm for um, space animals anyway but that was John Carpenter and so when John Carpenter called me and said, I want you to do Escape from L.A. and I want you to play the Lee Van Cleef part, which was the part that Malloy was actually, uh, was very similar to uh, in uh, the first um, Escape from L.A., Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. And I loved the fact that, that I was given this opportunity because number one, I loved Lee Van Cleef. I just thought he was great in the Escape from New York. And I had the great privilege of living in his house in Almeria, Spain. I was doing a movie there and he had just done a movie and he, he had just moved out of this house. And uh, I was the, the next resident. So I get to sleep, I slept in the same bed that Lee Van Cleef slept in. And I felt <laughs> this was a good beginning for Malloy. Um, the one thing I wanted to do with Malloy was I wanted to somehow keep him in touch with the, the, the natural world. So I decided, I asked John, I said, could he have a plant in his cubicle or in, in wherever they were locating, where they were communicating from? And he said, that's a good idea. So I, I had this plant that I was watering and kept, you know, and that that was sort of uh, my my subtext for this mm. character. And Stacy, I suppose he was a sort of a ruthless type, fascist type of character. Did you try and judge him on sort of past uh, fiction of real life characters, maybe past sort of fascist, past sort of 
war commandos that we knew in real life growing up? Or had you this idea in terms of how you want to differentiate him from everyone else? Not really. Not No one specific. No, not one character specifically. But his authoritarian behavior was certainly something that I had become used to by having played a lot of characters in that vein, authoritarian, dictatorial kind of characters. And uh, again, Lee Van Cleef in Escape from New York provided very similar kinds of behavior. Um, but there was no one specific, no. And Stacy, working uh, with uh, Kurt Russell, and Kurt Russell was heavily involved in this production, and obviously along with John Carpenter uh, from start uh, to finish. Did you yeah. almost get to see uh, Kurt's touches on everything in terms of each sort of scene, each sort of set, each sort of uh, storyline? Did Kurt have a, a visual effect on everything? Absolutely. He, Kurt is a, he is a com totally comprehensive actor. I mean, and he, and with this, and with this particular character, he really invested a lot of emotion, a lot of passion, and uh, and a lot of physicality. He uh, and Kurt loved to, to, to work physically. Um, I remember we were shooting one night. It was very cold. We were shooting out here in California, as a matter of fact. The shot of a helicopter coming in, landing. And uh, John Carpenter said that was after this take. Uh, he said that was great, Kurt, because Kurt had to he had to do some acting in the helicopter. He said that was great. Let's do it one more time. And Kurt said, if it was so good, John, why don't you just print that take twice? <laughs> he had a good sense of humor. He really did, and I and loved Steve it. And Stacey, the other prominent uh, characters uh, within the movie, obviously, Steve Buscemi, Peter Fonda, Pam Greer, all legends in their own right. And they also contributed as well, not only Kurt, not only yourself, but to the success of the movie. Yes. Uh, you know, I, one of my great, the only one of the great regrets that I didn't have a chance to work with either Peter Fonda or Steve Buscemi, both actors that I had tremendous respect for. But Cliff Robertson was also in the movie. Mm. He played the president. And that I had an opportunity. I had to work. I had a chance to work with him. And I and that was a great pleasure. Great pleasure. And Stacy, can you remember? I know it's going back in 1996 and you shot in you, it's, you shot in December 1995 and you wrapped up in March the 20th. Were there long days? Were there hectic days? Were there 12 or 14 hour days? Or for you and your particular scenes, were you there maybe for the first two or three, first two or three months? Or were you there from day one until the, the wrap on March the 20th? I was there from the very beginning and uh, there weren't long days. It was pretty, very smooth. John Carpenter runs a tight ship. He really does. He's had great experience. He's a wonderful director. He works well with actors and with technicians both the cameraman and, and the lighting man. But uh, we had a, the only problem that I can recall was that my gun, this gun that I had jammed considerably uh, many times. I could not, you know, we, that happens a lot in movies though, with guns jamming. But other than that, I can't recall any difficulty that we had on the film at all. No, it was, it went very smoothly. It was just, we were shooting nights in California and it was very cold. Uh, that I do recall as well. And I, at the time I was having terrible problems with my knees and one of the, uh, one of the technicians happened to notice my limping from one from my um, camper to the set. And he said, have you thought about getting a knee replacement? And I said, not really, no. He said, well, I, I really recommend it. I've done it and uh, I wish I'd done it when, when I was a younger man. And I've had both knees replaced since then. So that was the beginning of also um, uh, medical insights. <laughs> And Stacey, in terms of all the action scenes in Escape from LA, in terms of all the high octane sort of stuff, did you have an expert sort of a stunts team uh, in terms of that? Did 
did Kurt do nearly most of all his own stunts? He does. He did. He did at the time. Yes, he did most of his own stunts. Um, and uh, you know, I when I was a younger actor, I loved doing my own stunts too. But what what happens is you you pay for it later on. Uh, you do. I uh, um, stuntmen are hired for a very good reason. They're because they can do things that normally uh, we mere mortals have trouble doing running and fighting and whatever the, you know whatever the action calls for whatever the script calls for so i in my later years have come to admire and uh, stuntmen even all the more and i encourage actors is that whenever you have a chance to use a stuntman do it don't you know but it's hard it's awfully difficult i mean james james garner you, ruined his body doing his all of his own stunts. Steve McQueen used to do all of his own stunts as well. Many actors love to do their own stunts. I, as I said, I, I loved to do particularly fighting and driving. Those are the two things that I, I had most fun doing. But- And I suppose- I suppose, Stacey, there was a big reaction, obviously, after the first one, Escape from New York, and this was the sort of follow-up, and the character Snake, he's the sort of bad boy, the sort of uh, favourite type of computer game type, action type uh, uh, character that so many computer games that we see today are based around these sort of, uh, that fictional character Snake uh, Pilsen. Um, in terms of the reaction towards the movie, did you expect it to be a hit for straight from the beginning? Were you pleasantly surprised uh, with the reaction? And what was do you, what do you remember of the premiere of the movie? Did you have a private screen uh, casting for the cast members? I, I don't recall. I think I was doing something else when this when the uh, when the movie premiered. But I do. I I was. We were all very optimistic about the film because it was a wonderful script, a wonderful cast, and of course, Kurt had had great success with Escape from New York. So we were all very much optim. We were very optimistic about its chances at the box office. And it turned out to be, a, uh, I think, uh, a hit. I mean, I don't know how it did relative to Escape from New York. Do you have any idea how it did financially at the box office? It was close enough. It was close enough. It wasn't too far off. But when you think of sequels as well, it's probably one of those sequels that stand up. Normally, all, all oh. times, all, other movies do sequels and they don't live up to the sort of original. Escape from LA was close, uh, far, uh, nearly out of power, as close to Escape from New York. So that's what obviously I was going to ask you next. How important is it? How hard is it to recreate the success of an original movie doing a sequel? We've seen so many times with Die Hards and Lethal Whip, and as you go along, it gets harder and harder to live up to the anticipation of and the success of the movie that's gone before it. That's right. Well, but there are a couple of examples where the, the sequel was actually almost outdid the original Top Gun, this mm -hmm. new Top Gun that uh, Tom Cruise just did is doing much better business than the original, apparently. Hmm. And it caused people to go back to look at the original. Um, as I recall, an animated film, to Toy Story. Toy yeah. the, the Toy Stories, the sequels did better than the original, yeah. That's very rare though, you're right. I mean, generally speaking, it's hard to live up to the, particularly if it's a big, big hit. It's very difficult. I mean, they've tried, <laughs> how many, a Star is Born movies have been made, you know, that uh, um, they try to live up to the original. It's hard. Police Academy. <laughs> Police Academy. Yeah. 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 And well, I did a couple myself. I did a, a, a Up in Smoke and Nice Dreams with uh, Cheech and Chong. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah. And Stacey, before I come on to other projects that you're involved in, I know you're a busy man. I just want to touch you, a well-traveled actor. You've been all around the world. Has you ever done anything here in Ireland in terms of acting, or have you just been here on recreational purposes, on holiday purposes? Uh, recreational, yes. But uh, but uh, it's one of my favorite places to to be. I love uh, I love Ireland. Uh, uh, I, 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 the last time I was there, I had the great privilege of 
riding horseback around the Ring of Kerry. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm a, I love golf and I, I played golf at Adair. And, and my son, his name is Shannon. We named him after, because uh, I'm, I'm half Irish myself, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and Shannon Airport, is next yeah. to, uh, yeah, we, we, we um, and I, I, I played golf at Adair and stayed at Adair, I love it. Um, Valley Bunyan and down to Cork and uh, yeah. I love Ireland, I really do. Uh, um, the golf courses are tough there. I mean, that's where they, the Irish Open, boy, I, I, you know, you hit the, you, you hit the ball uh, off the fairway and you're in deep, deep trouble. I, 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 I uh, as a younger man, I would I could play golf better than I could. You know. And Stacy, I know it's a busy time for you in your career at the moment. You have an awful lot of on in terms of guest appearances and roles. You might enlighten our audience of some of the projects. I know some things are under wrap, but what you can tell us of, of what you will appear be appearing on our TV screens in the near future. Yes, uh, uh, the blacklist on Netflix. And also on NBC over here in America, but Netflix, uh, the Blue Bloods, uh, on, on on Hulu, I believe. Yeah, um, both of those series have been very long running. Um, uh, I think Blue Bloods is twelve years, and Blacklist is now in its ninth year. Um, and so I'm I'm very honored and privileged to still be working at my age, and um, I. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, con continuing in that vein. And Stacy, uh, for the final sort of question we have for you now, uh, we're going back to Escape from Delhi, and let's pretend an encyclopedia, a dictionary of, was done of the franchise. And under your character, Commander Malai, they left two blank sentences, a sort of synopsis as such to describe the character and their talent agent came to you and said, we want you, Stacey Keach, to write those two sentences to describe what type of person Commander Malai was. If you met him walking down the street and he was passing up against you, what would you like those two sentences to read? You wouldn't want to bump into him. You wouldn't want to anger him. You wouldn't, you, you would want to see him smile. As long as he kept smiling, he'd be, he'd be someone that you might be interested in listening to some stories that he might have to tell about his days in his cactus garden. On that note, Stacey Keach, an absolute pleasure talking to you on this week's episode of Into the Vault, a special part of our entertainment show and a special part of our series looking back at cult classic movies throughout the decade. Stacey Keach played the role of Commander Malai in the 1996 movie Escape from LA alongside Kurt Russell, Steve Buscemi, Peter Fonda, uh, AJ Langer, Pam Greer, directed by the one and only uh, Mr. Carpenter himself, John Carpenter. Stacey Keach, an absolute pleasure talking to you today. We wish you all the best in your future endeavours, and please, God, we may talk to you again sometime in the near future. But for the moment, Stacey Keach, God bless and stay safe. Thank you. God bless. And God bless to you and your, and your viewers. Thank you very much. Cheers, Stacey. <laughs>